Now, KDFR reports. A look at issues facing Des Moines and Central Iowa. One of the things we endeavor to do with the Central Iowa Career Expo is not only the obvious, connecting people with potential career opportunities, but we also want to provide them with other services, including education and training. I'm Larry Vavrick, and our guest on this second Saturday of the new year is Kyle Horn. Kyle is founder and director of America's Job Honor Awards and is also a member of the Workforce Readiness Committee of SHRM, the Society for Human Resource Management here in Central Iowa. And welcome, Kyle. Good to have you with us. Thank you so much, Larry. It's a pleasure to be here. We mentioned your role as a member of SHRM, and certainly their major event is coming up next Thursday, their ninth annual Iowa Career Expo, which will be held on January 14th at Hy-Vee Hall. Absolutely. Yes, it is our major event of the year. It's one of Iowa's largest career fairs, if not, in fact, the largest. Last year, we saw more than 80 employers in attendance, and it's a tremendous opportunity for those who are seeking jobs. The organizations that come are hiring from a wide array of positions, from entry level to professional, and in a variety of industry sectors. There are multiple opportunities in manufacturing, finance, human services, you name it. So certainly a lot of opportunity under one big roof. Well, Kyle, I know the day starts out with some educational sessions and net to work. And I'd like you to share about how the day will go as far as the schedule and, you know, the number of employers that job seekers can expect to meet with. Certainly. Again, it begins on Thursday, January 14th of next week, and at 9 a.m. we have the Net to Work Employer Panel. So that will be an opportunity to meet with a variety of employers who will be seated in a panel format, taking questions from the audience. Now, these are individuals who are engaged in the hiring process as part of their lives on a daily basis. So it's an ideal opportunity for job seekers who have questions to pose them at that time and hear them from the horse's mouth, so to speak. So those who come a little early might have the advantage of an opportunity to network with other job seekers and perhaps with employers. And then at 10 a.m., the doors open to the Central Iowa Career Expo. And again, last year we had, I believe the, the final tally was 82 employers and just a wide variety. Some of the major players that you would expect here in Central Iowa in attendance. We also have colleges that are represented there, the military, human services agencies, so we have nonprofits, we have manufacturers, we have business and finance and insurance companies and really it's a it's an ideal opportunity to expose yourself to the length and breadth of job opportunities that are currently available in central Iowa and again the event will be held at Hy-Vee Hall which is located at 730 3rd Street here in Des Moines 50309 and before we conclude today I will direct you to our website uh, where you can get this uh, information online as well. Well, Kyle, what kinds of training are available for those who are in the workforce and are really struggling to find meaningful employment? I appreciate that question, Larry, because one of the things we endeavor to do with the Central Iowa Career Expo is not only the obvious, connecting people with potential career opportunities, but we also want to provide them with other services, including education and training. For example, we have a resume critiquing area, and that is staffed with human resources professionals whose professional careers are in involved in uh, reviewing resumes from their applicants. They do this in a professional setting and they are there to help you. So um, if you bring your resume along, and we certainly encourage you to do that, both in a printed form and if you have one on a, um, on a USB drive as well, and they can review that resume, sit down, make recommendations. Fresh eyes are always a great way to give a tune-up to a resume. And of course, we can all become blind to certain areas of weakness in our own work product. This is a chance for someone else in an unbiased setting to try to help you to refine that resume. And then you can actually make the updates right there on the spot and resave it to your USB drive. We also will have an online job application area with a bank of computers. Many employers these days, as you well know, prefer that their applicants apply online. And we want to accommodate those who wish to do so on that very day. So you can sit down and there will also be some proctors there in the vicinity who can help you with any questions you may have. You know, we recognize, Larry, that in attendance at these job fairs, we have some people who are 
trained and educated professionals well along in their career, and we also have people who are beginning their career in the entry level stages, and uh, we want to, to be there to help people wherever they are. And for that reason, we, we strongly encourage those. If, if you struggled in the past, if 2015 was a tough year with a lot of doors closed in your face, we certainly want to encourage individuals to recognize that it's a new year with new opportunities, and we want you to come and see what's there waiting for you. You might pick up a few real gems that will assist you in retooling your job search, retooling the way you present yourself, and indeed you may even meet a prospective employer. Certainly worth your time. So again, those Career Expo doors open after the Net to Work Employer event, which is from 9 to 10. The Career Expo runs from 10 a.m. until 2.30 p.m., and you'll have all that time to uh, attend the help sessions that I described. We also have some em employment experts who will be teaching so-called hot topic presentations. Those will be held at three different points during the day. It's just open seating. You can come and go as you wish, but you'll hear experts expounding on topics ranging from uh, effective networking techniques to, um, to how to land that job. And so the whole day is filled with a wide variety of value-added material that we think will help further your job search, get you off to a strong start in 2016. Well, very well said, Kyle, and I'd like you to share about the sponsoring organization, Central Iowa SHRM, and how they got involved in holding this event every year. Absolutely. Well, Central Iowa SHRM stands for the Central Iowa Society for Human Resources Management. And we are, as the name implies, a, a group of HR professionals in Central Iowa who get together. And among the things we try to accomplish are putting out some great training for area employers and also hosting this, which is our flagship job fair every year. And the Workforce Readiness Committee of Central Iowa SHRM takes primary responsibility for this fair. And, and I happen to serve on that Workforce Readiness Committee. So we're also committed to um, helping to resolve any gaps to employment that are experienced by Central Iowa job seekers. For example, people with barriers to employment. Uh, we try to um, develop methods and venues in which they can overcome those barriers and become workforce ready. Well, everyone's very familiar with the fact that we have a, a pretty low unemployment rate here in central Iowa and indeed in Iowa in general. You know, it's dancing around 3% here in central Iowa. So employers are struggling to find qualified workers. And the huge irony can be if you're one of those job seekers and you can't find opportunities, it may be that you need to, to tweak your, your skill set so that it is a good match with um, the needs that employers have. Or if there's something else that's damaging your chances, this is a good time to address those. You know, uh, again, to, to be able to, to speak with professionals about how to refine your interview skills, you know, uh, to make sure that you're dressing appropriately. And that's something that we encourage all people, even those who come to the career fair, dress as though you want the job. And you're there to impress a prospective employer. And they will appreciate if you've obviously made an effort to do so. Bring printed copies of your resume if you have one. And if you don't have one, come there prepared to, to make one. Because in this day and age, it's pretty much a ticket of entry in order to get a job, even for a lot of places where their entry-level positions traditionally don't require that. Increasingly, they do. So please bring that along. And you know, I, I should mention also, Larry, that there are abundant resources available in central Iowa for those who are struggling with significant barriers to employment. And there I'm talking about individuals who, for example, have prior criminal convictions. Perhaps they have mental or physical disabilities at some degree on the spectrum that have hindered them from getting jobs. Perhaps they are English language learners and their lack of English proficiency limits their opportunities. If there's someone that you know and love who has similar struggles, reach out and find a local agency that can work with that particular barrier to employment. Now a good place to start is an organization called Central Iowa Works and they are essentially a consortium of local job developers who specialize in various barriers to employment and their phone number is 515-243-2130. So a lot of opportunities. People who who have struggled, who seem to be getting nowhere, I encourage them to uh, make another run at this. It's a new year, new opportunities, <laughs> great new venue to get out there and start equipping yourself with new skills. And Kyle, I know there's somebody maybe in their 40s or 50s who was downsized, and it's not that easy these days as a, you know, a boomer, middle-aged boomer, to find another job. What advice do you have for these people who may have had interviews, but nothing is really open for them? Yes, it's a 
it's a real dilemma for people who find themselves in, in that position. And we all know that, like it or not, age discrimination is an inescapable reality. You know, some companies might be disinclined to hire individuals over a certain age, although they probably would never be clear about that. It's probably clear from the perspective of the applicant. There are a few things that can be done to mitigate that. First of all, long-term unemployment, which is defined as those who have been without a job for six months or longer, used to be considered a distinctive red flag among hiring managers, far less so today. And the reason much of the stigma has evaporated is because employers recognize that in 2008, an economic asteroid struck the earth, and things were different after that. And people who had long careers with high degrees of specialization who lost their jobs were frequently very challenged to find a job that satisfied their standard of living requirements in terms of pay and that was a good fit with their abilities. And when those individuals would become increasingly desperate and apply for jobs for which they were overqualified, frequently they'd be told, well, you're overqualified. And from an employer's perspective, that means flight risk. As soon as you find something more in tune with your skills and qualifications, you'll be gone like a shot. So those individuals have really been caught in the middle. And, and I would say this, there's far less stigma associated with that position. But the fact of the matter is, this is a job seekers market right now. Employers are struggling to find people to fill their positions, from entry level to skilled trades on up to the professional positions. And a huge factor prevails to the advantage of your more experienced job seeker is this. You are regarded as reliable. And frequently, a lot of the people who are new to the workforce out there are not famous for their reliability or for their commitment to the job. So that's something that um, the more experienced worker can carry to the table. And that's something certainly that I would emphasize in interviews. Hey, I'm here today. I will be here tomorrow. I will be here like clockwork. I'm committed to this job. Music to the ears of an employer who has seen too much turnover. Well, in closing, Kyle, could you again share about the annual Iowa Career Expo that will be held next Thursday, January 14th at Hy-Vee Hall in downtown Des Moines? Absolutely. This is one of Iowa's largest career fairs. We expect to see around 80 employers in attendance hiring for a wide variety of positions. Not only will you have chances to meet prospective employers here, but many opportunities to energize your job search through training, resume improvement, and um, and learning about some very important topics. So 9 a.m. at High V Hall, Thursday, January 14th, the Net to Work panel. Seating for that begins at 845, and the Career Expo doors open at 10 a.m. and lasts until 2.30 p.m. So we look forward to seeing you there. And for more information, you can visit our website at www.ci-sherm, that's S-H-R-M, Org. Thank you so much, Kyle. We always appreciate having you share with us. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Our guest on today's program was Kyle Horn, founder and director of America's Job Honor Awards, and also a member of the Workforce Readiness Committee at Central Iowa SHRM. Next on KDFR, we're visiting with Nola Eigner. Nola serves as Health Educator Public Information Officer at the Polk County Health Department. Welcome, Nola. Good to have you with us today. Hi, Larry. It's great to talk to you. Well, in this new year, you'll be holding another one of your health insurance enrollment fairs next Wednesday, January 13th at the Evelyn K. Davis Center on University Avenue. And I'd like you to share about this and why this event is important for you know people in the central Iowa area. Well, this is a really great way for people who do not have health insurance or who are maybe renewing their health insurance plan and have questions to sit down one-on-one with an enrollment specialist and a trained professional to help them understand the insurance process. You know, for a lot of us, understanding our own health insurance is confusing. So this is a really great way to figure out what plan is good for you and for your family. Could you share about some of the items that those attending need to take with them to the enrollment fair? Yep. So if you are going to be coming to our enrollment fair, you need to bring a current ID, a social security card, your 2014 income tax return, if working, a last pay stub, and then an email account for everyone. This is a really great way, again, for people who have questions about health insurance or want to know about their plan, what's good for their family, they have chronic health conditions, what is going to give them the optimal benefits. And then one of the nice things that we also have is we have Spanish interpreters available at the event. And so the last Last day to enroll for health insurance to start February 1st is January 15th. So our event falls on January 13th. So this is a great way for people to come out and get that set up so they can start enrollment February 1st. Otherwise, the Marketplace Health Insurance
insurance does close on January 31st, 2016. If anyone has questions about this enrollment or renewal fair, they can call me. I am Noel Eigner. I'm the health educator at the Polk County Health Department, and my contact number is 286-3848. Thank you so much, Nola. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. We've been visiting with Nola Eigner, health educator and public information officer at the Polk County Health Department. And prior to Nola, we visited with Kyle Horn, sharing about the Iowa Career Expo. Larry Vavrick on KDFR. This has been KDFR Reports, a look at issues facing Des Moines and Central Iowa. Opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of Family Radio, its staff, or management.